I just want to say this. Nothing could be more targeted. No relief could be more important than relief for working people. Well, the senator's right. This body has spent trillions of dollars this year alone on COVID relief. We're getting ready to spend, apparently, another trillion dollars more. And yet, working people are told they may be last, if they get relief at all. I don't think the American people understand that. I don't think people in Missouri don't understand it. And I just urge members of these bodies, go home and try explaining that to the people of your state. Go ahead. In fact, now I understand that my Democrat colleagues don't want to shut down all of the bank money. Because who knows what we might be able to do with that in the future. Oh, they're fine. They're more than fine. They're doing great. Now, Wall Street is doing great. Big tech, they're doing great. The big multinational corporations, fantastic. Working people, working people are living in their cars. Working people can't go to the doctor. Working people can't pay their rent. They should be first, Mr. President, not last. And it is no answer for this body to tell them, go get in an unemployment line. Really? That's the response? Go get in an unemployment line. Now, the working people of this country, frankly, deserve better. They deserve to be the top priority, just like they have made this country the top priority in their lives and their families. This is not the end of this fight, Mr. President. I'm here right now on this floor, and I will keep working with whomever it takes, for however long it takes, until we get the working people of this country relief. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor. Now, we all hope and pray that the new vaccine will be distributed as quickly as possible and that it will put an end to this nightmare. But today, the truth is that millions of low-income and middle-class families are suffering in a way that they have not suffered since the Great Depression of the 30s. Today, the reality is that over half of our workers are living paycheck to paycheck, trying to survive on a starvation wage of 10 or 12 bucks an hour. The reality is that millions of our senior citizens are trapped in their homes, unable to see their kids or their grandchildren, unable to go to a grocery store, and many of them are trying to get by on twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year Social Security and scared that they may come down with the virus and die. In addition, millions more with disabilities are suffering. Further, in our country today, one out of four workers are either unemployed or make less than $20,000 a year. And in the midst of this pandemic, because we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a right, in the midst of this pandemic, Worst health care crisis in 100 years, over 90 million Americans are uninsured or underinsured and unable to go to a doctor when they need to. Further, we have the worst eviction crisis in modern history. Some 30 million families worry that because they cannot pay their rent, they may end up out on the street. That is, Mr. President, where we are today economically. And if this country means anything, if democracy means anything, if the U.S. government means anything, it means that we cannot turn our backs on this suffering, not in Vermont, not in Wisconsin, not in New York, not in any state in this country where people are hurting in an unprecedented way. It means that we cannot leave Washington as senators for the holidays to go back to our families unless we address the pain and anxiety of other families throughout this country. From Vermont Yield for, for some support for his amendment. I would be happy to yield to the... Uh, I will speak briefly and I thank my colleague. I want to join my friend Senator Sanders to support his amendment to give $1,200 in direct financial support to the American people in the year-end emergency relief bill 
Now, this effort should not subtract from any other program already in the bill, like enhanced unemployment aid to small business, education, health care, or another provision. We don't need to offset the cost or cut from elsewhere in the bill to make sure the stimulus checks are $1,200 for each adult and then money for children and others, as he will elaborate. Much of the money will go back into the economy anyway. The reason for the amendment is simple. Over the course of this pandemic, working Americans have taken it on the chin. Millions have lost their jobs through no fault of their own. 26 million have had trouble putting food on the table in the last five weeks. Bread lines stretching down American highways. 12 million Americans alone average of $6,000 in rent and mortgage. So we have an opportunity in this emergency relief bill to give financial aid directly, directly to those Americans. Mean the difference between Americans paying the rent or not, affording groceries or not, the difference between hanging on until the vaccine helps our country get back to normal. Now, the only objection we've heard is this will add too much to the deficit. That's why a Republican senator rejected a similar request earlier today to push a baseless agenda of austerity. Please. By now, Republican objections over debt and deficit are comical. They added $2 trillion to the debt for a massive tax cut for corporations and the wealthy, and that was during a steady economy. But now the economy is on life support. Americans are queuing up on bread lines, filing for unemployment, just as the Democratic president is about to take office. All of a sudden, the deficit scolds are back. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. Chairman Powell, hardly a big liberal, of the Federal Reserve insisted the risk of doing of the risk of overdoing it is less than the risk of underdoing it. The quickest way to get money into the pockets of the American people is to send some of their tax dollars right back where they came from. So let's step up to the plate, deliver the $1,200 survival checks to millions of Americans before the holidays. I support Senator Sanders' request fully and hope the Senate will consent and yield back. Well, let me thank the senior senator. senator.